Good morning. Hello, Taylor. Good morning. So it is five after eight. So I don't know, should we start or wait a little bit more? Um, what do you think, guys? Go ahead and start. <laughs> Let's just take a look at stuff. I'm working on some of the issues right now. Okay, I will share the screen. Up. Okay. Um, okay. I think that you can see my screen, right? Yes. Okay, uh, well, in terms of announcements, uh, we have something for um, the next, um, or something coming. <laughs> I don't know, well, um, let's see. There is one. Um, this week, well, not some announcement, but this week is a telecom TV event on Thursday. Yeah, the great telco debate. Hang on a second. I'll add. If I can get back to the right one there. There we go. Mm 
So it's a three minute band or like? Yeah. <clears throat> There's the agenda. Um, one of them that looks interesting, open ran and closed ranks. So different people working on different sides. Uh, Vodafone, Juniper, Dell, um, someone, the executive director of TIP, Telecom Info Project is going to be on that one. And then, and all of these, mm -hmm. all of these are, are free. That anyone can watch them, or you don't have to pay anything. Um, I think so, right? I, I saw like ticket sure. discount, ticket price. I can't tell. I'm trying to to look at it. Okay. Watch okay. all the key moments live and free on Telcom TV. At least it seems like it based on the. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Registration. it's interesting the registration says which ones are you interested in but doesn't mention oh yeah it does it's just telling you others that are coming up later in the 2023 so all right open ran summit telcos and public cloud summit and stuff, but those are all 2023. I guess we could add those as other ones. Okay, uh, I will try to reduce your and if I can wipe them. Yeah. So, yeah, just for another bullet here. Um, oh yeah, I found like uh, this week uh, is the open source summit in Japan. Uh, there is one single topic which are related with telcos. Um, I don't know if it's meant to be Japanese or, uh, but, um, and I, I didn't register because I'm, um, the ticket for this one is twenty five dollars per for for the virtual event. So I didn't consider like just paying twenty five or a single topic, which I, I don't know if this is going to be in in, in English or in Japanese or so probably later. Uh, we can access to the recordings and see what what happens. Right, sounds good. All right. So all, all of these three are part of the, is this other one or are separate things? Oh, are, are different things, right? Yeah, those are all different events. Okay. And they have options to access uh, virtually or all of them are in person? Um, probably virtually. Most of the telecom TV has virtual. Okay. I'm just putting them in here because I think we should at least take a look and see if there's any items that we think are important. Okay. Um, 
Thanks. Uh, any any other event? Uh, I probably. I mean, there's MWC, but I don't. I don't. You know, that's a big event. I'll say. Um, There's some encouragement at one summit um, the, in the Elephant Developer Forum to get engaged with the TIP staff. So maybe we should look towards some meetings with them and what would be, you know, areas to collaborate. Did you take a look of the Silva or what was the name of Silva? Silva project? Yeah, it have been some. Um, Watson especially has been looking into it, but um, ideally we can find a way to collaborate and have contributions both ways um, if, they're going to be utilizing um, tools and existing documentation and other stuff. I think it would be good to contribute upstream from Silva and then for folks to be engaged with them to incorporate directly and, and think about you know the direction they're going. Um, yeah, they I, have it listed right there. Look at that. CNF tests would be the test suite. I'm guessing, you know, just Kubernetes in general, but I think they're actually going to at least have um, some part of the Kubernetes ED test or KubeRef or something, which will be related to the Kubernetes conformance or I'll say the um, ensuring that it's compatible. Yeah, for, from my understanding, it's like let's be taking the Anoket um, RI2 or RIRC, RC2, just focusing in this particular area. Like, uh, I mean, they're, they're not trying to cover their, their A1 or uh, so, yeah, just read the documents and it's from a lot, of, a lot of good things and so in terms of the issues, let's see uh, if they find like that um, same grail, I guess. Okay. Um, so what else? Uh, have you ever watched the, the, this, not right, um, the recordings of the one summit? No, no, I haven't. Is there some good ones on there to? Yeah, well, uh, I was probably one of that I like it uh, was from from Sana. Um, yes, yeah, this is a particular. I guess she she uh, she has a good uh, presentation talking about the the problems of the telcos, like uh, the direction that they are taking, and the whys are, or, or the reasons that they are they having to to start working with Matthew and, and what Matthew is proposing. So I guess she summarized very well, like the main goals and the reason behind that. Um, probably for now it is one of the great sessions that I've seen in the ones. Oh, at least a little, not, not a great one, but uh, just, offering like a, a different point of view of things. 
probably this this could be uh, an interesting one to take a look. All right. If you haven't. Yeah, can you just add a note here? No. Drop the okay. title or whatever. Uh, oh, strange. Yeah, the, the rest of them are um, are interesting ones, but uh, probably not too much related what we have been trying to do uh, and offering different perspectives of things. The other one was fairly with uh, the the Nephew Wars workshop. Uh, so they provide like uh, the source code and um, they offer several things. Um, but I, I don't know if you had a chance to attend it or. Um, no. Um, yeah. They, or nephew, I guess, this is the, the, the source code that they use for the, I was watching in Slack when they were doing the updates, but I didn't get back to it. Um, by the time they did a demo, I saw they were doing up to the last minute changes. Do you find it interesting? Well, uh, I like the way that uh, John uh, uh, explained certain concepts and things. Mm -hmm. and so one of the terms which is still confused for me is package in terms of like a nephew I guess it's more like um like a kind of a helm chart but more like open and uh, has an option to to the way to retrieve things from upstream combined with the with the downstream um so he uh, he has uh, all these concepts defined there and try to clarify all these things um for the workshop yeah it has a lot of uh things i mean it's not easy to reproduce because definitely you need like a scale of virtual machine in in gcp and have a, a github a repo associated with that dm and things like that and that relation is based on the host name mm -hmm. but but yeah, just reading the documentation is is very valuable in terms of like uh, at least clarify a few things. And from my point of view, it's a good starting point. All right. Sounds good. I'll check that out too. And I definitely would like to watch that video. Um, been trying to get her engaged um, some. She spoke at Open Source Summit in Vancouver before um, things officially really got started, like some of the initiatives. And it was just a small um, gathering to communicate what was where things were going and. She had spoken back then about like adoption of stuff like that wasn't happening, like CICD practices and things. So it would be it'd be good to get her involved, see how we can get engaged with her and yeah, yeah. absolutely. All right. Um 
Do we have, do we have like a PR token or things like that? Um, yeah, I'll put a title oh. on for this. So. I mean, it's straightforward. Just need to do it. <laughs> yeah, for me, I'm okay. Um, so do we have to wait for uh, Tom to keep thumbs up or someone else? I, I guess, well, yeah, we can wait for us. Lucina, I mean, does it look good to you? That title? There's the pull request. I was trying to add some other people. Just want to get it closed out. I don't think we need five for this. Would be more important as <clears throat> adding adding more content to that ex, um, best practice. Thanks, Lucina. Um, or creating other best practices. Like there's some other content. Yeah, I mean, it says user stories and stuff, but I guess it's valid for everything. There's maybe enough and we just need to, if you go open the actual, go ahead and merge it. I think with Lucina in your, as long mm -hmm. as nobody objects it's a title it's minimal we've already accepted the best practice so now we're, yeah delete it and then go open that best practice <clears throat> from um okay it's an exception yeah Oh, can you go to the top? Did that title, was this supposed to delete some stars or something? Hmm. Are we supposed to have the star? I don't think, maybe I was supposed to delete them. Yeah, because the other ones, we don't have it. So. Just edit it and do a direct commit. What? Uh, I think I, I treated it like it was going to make it bold and didn't. Just, just before that, let me take a look out because I saw that some failures were having here. Just make sure that it's not in send document. All right. Um, markdown, exceptions. Oh, it's the same, right? <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah. The only one. Yeah, Probably it's is. an emphasis, and we had spaces around between the asterisks. So. What about the, the, this uh, release sign up? It's not the same case? There's no spaces. So I guess, you know, what is it? I don't know that it matters. When you're using the pound sign at the start, it's already going to do something. Okay. Should I just... Just, yeah, you can just call it fixing errors or whatever. Markdown errors, linting errors, yep. Yeah, no. Looks good. All right. So if you scroll, so we have all these sections: proposal, work, workload, context. And just scroll through, and you'll see what do we actually have in this document. Um, like proposal. Well, I was just saying, yeah. What is all of it? If you look above, is really the only content we have. So that, I mean, that's fine. I think that's enough to kind of communicate what is this best practice? What's actually relevant and makes sense? Um,
we haven't been doing those check marks. I think we should probably start doing that. But this all seems complete enough. But do we need to delete some of the stuff that's lower down? Like, like, like the workload context. Yeah. So, I mean, it says user story is optional, but do we just leave it like that? Or delete it? You know, it's kind of a template. It kind of seems like we should just clean it up once we're done. Well, I'm not sure uh, if that hurts to have it or um, because I, I don't know, probably eventually we can add more things here or or, or if, we mo if we modify the template, we have to date all these places as well, so. I, well, I'm not saying modify the template. I'm saying literally just modify this one best practice and delete the extra stuff that's not necessary, but. So it's clean at the end. And we can add them back if, if it makes sense. But user stories for this particular best practice don't really, don't seem to matter unless you're gonna write your own right here. I guess we could write a user story that says, here's an example of someone having a best, uh, best practice that they're gonna ignore. They're not gonna follow a best practice. So then they document, I mean, if we want to give a real example, like when should you not, when an example of not using or not following the no root processes and containers. Mm -hmm. So maybe a sidecar that that's using it and it has an exception. But then we we literally have to come up with. I mean, it it's fine if we want to give a real a real example. So maybe it's okay to leave this and prompt us, but we should put something in there. What well, we have done in the other uh, documents, uh, what well, we have information for them, right? Like, uh, yeah, this. References would probably be something easier to add in to that to that one. Anyways, it's fine. the 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 ticket open was only for title. It would be good to add more content, but we can also work on other best practices. I at least wanted to close out what we had an issue for. The references, and I, I guess we could open issues, and mark them as when they're, we had some input from, there's a way to say, hey, we're open to anyone collaborating. Um, they're adding two things. <clears throat> uh, help wanted, like the tags. There's a, I think it's like, um, first contribution or whatever you're tagging it and people are starting to click through tags and just help on any project so if there's anybody that's looking to contribute you know we've had people drop in on this call before so we could add a uh, i guess that ticket add title to exceptions that would have been straightforward for pretty much anybody to go in and read and go okay here's what the summary and motivation let me come up with a title it's document your exceptions um <clears throat> we could create new tickets like add add references to that best practice and for that particular one i think someone could go through and add a reference so here's an example of documenting your compliance there's there's a lot of examples out there for different any project it doesn't really matter this isn't specific to cloud native or telecom it's communicating if you're following <clears throat> standards 
community standards, best practices, whatever. Mm -hmm. Can you close um, ticket to, uh, 227? Is all right? Yeah. Completed. Yeah, that's done. Anyways, I, I think we should, we could add tickets for any of them and somewhat of motivation. Requirements for multi-interface, what do we have left today? <clears throat> Eight minutes. Uh, well, just when I just started the, um, the draft, um, but when I created the draft, I, I didn't know about this, uh, uh, I don't know, like a discussion in the community about that modifying the APIs and what, what they're trying to do in the Kubernetes API to, to support multiple interfaces. So so that's why it's like a hold because uh, I don't know if eventually we don't have to create like a best practice for that. Mostly we're going to have or to follow what the Kubernetes community is going to propose. So that's the current say, like, uh, I mean, definitely we have the draft here, but yeah, this is not something related with what the community is, is, is doing. I, is, I mean, does, is it not aligned with what they're doing, annotations? No, no, no. Um, no, from my understanding, they, they, they want to uh, modify the, the current API uh, definition so basically, that's my understanding. It's like in, in your bot definition, you will have uh, the, the capability to add the different interfaces and implementation on modules is going to follow that new API definition. So still, I still don't know how they are going to implement it, but probably, yeah, probably the, the thing that I should refer here is like to all the discussions that are hot happening in the community. That way we can correlate things there. Yeah. yeah, because they, they have a lot of uh, documents and um, discussions in the community, which are not reflected here. But yeah, I guess uh, in, in regarding this draft, um, I, I think it's for now it's better to keep it as, as it is, like a draft, and uh, see what is happening in the community. I mean, if, if we can write it where it's aligned, then we can move forward. If it's already aligned, then I think we can move forward now. Um, aside from that, I think it'd be good to get an update from, I, I don't know what's going on with the discussions, the current discussions with SIG Network. Do, do you, have you been keeping up with those? Um, the last time that I attended was before the one summit. Uh, but yeah, they were just discussing the, the things that they discussed before in the KipCon. I mean, they didn't, too much progress on, on that topic. I'm trying to find the actual, um, I don't even, can't find the, the meetings. Gosh. Like when do they meet? Hmm. It's not in a Slack. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Sig network, multi network. Oh yeah, they have a specific channel. That's right. Uh, 
Community yeah, Sync was on November 2nd. So when's the next? They had, they didn't announce it in Slack, but they had a November 3rd. All right. Stack rank requirements. Oh, this is a follow up meeting. It's good to the chat. Um, this one, there's a each network provider manages their endpoints and endpoint slices. Topic, I guess this was, um, recorded, maybe, I don't know, let's see. Cap draft, Google Mate. This is a very interesting document. Um, this uh, talks about the, the different use cases and they discuss um, why, why they are doing this. The multi-network requirements stock or which one? Yeah, the requirements. Yeah. So it's like what they use during the contributor summit. They, mm -hmm. they went one by one and they were checking, they were checking that everything is captured. All right. <laughs> So, so what I'm going to do is uh, add that these two documents here, right? Like a, at least having like a reference for the community is doing, right? So, Sounds good. Uh, so the annotation um, document, the best practice, to me seems still relevant, annotating, whether telling people that they need to do annotations for how they're setting up their network is, is moving people towards um, Cloud native practices, even if the community hasn't decided on where that could be, you can still implement the some of the core concepts for doing doing these things: the configuration, declaring your declaring your intentions and what you're wanting, even if you're doing it in vendor specific. Um, annotation types. I mean, that it's still moving towards that versus saying, oh, we're going to statically generate what we need with a shell script that generates, you know, the things on the fly by talking to some external database. And you have no idea what's going on because it's statically configured by a network admin ahead of time. Like that wouldn't be cloud native. But if you said that you're defining stuff and then the in Helm templates, even if it's Dan M or Multus or whatever, that you're leaving it up 
like device configuration or whatever else, if you're trying to make it where that stuff is dynamically determined, it's at least moving towards it. And then if we have a more generic way of doing things that's directly aligned with core Kubernetes, mm -hmm. then that configuration that someone is already using with Multis and Danim or whatever, like you've done it that works with all of them, like just adding all of the different ones and then de 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 uh, determining based on the CNI that's there, you can do it. Well, if you've already done that, now you can simplify your code because you're, in my mind, you should be able to simplify it because you're moving it all to one standard configuration. So I think this document doing the annotation is still valid, moving it forward. Yeah, and also the other thing that I was thinking right now is, uh, is, is also applicable for, for example, Ingus controllers. So let's say that there are certain annotations which applies only for Nginx or the chick proxy. So, uh, and also you can apply the same, the same approach, right? So, so you can specify all, all the, the major ones or like uh, all the different annotations and doesn't matter. Like, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, your pod or your deployment are going to take just the annotations which are relevant to the particular HA controller, right? Uh, no matter if you have other ones, uh, those the other ones are going to be ignored. And um, so basically the main idea is not restrict the number of annotations that you can put it in your pod definition. It's like, put whatever, like, don't, don't be scared. Like. Um, yeah, so so what do you suggest, like, uh, to continue doing the discussion in the draft, uh, so or starting moving the draft from from there into the into a PR or Uh, Taylor, are you still yeah, there? Yeah, I'm trying to, I'm thinking like if we get it, I, ideally we're going to get, I'd like to get some more people engaged on it. And mm -hmm. I wonder if what's been written, if it would be worthwhile to have something written up, maybe just taking what's currently there and then go talk with the SIG multi-network group add it to their agenda if it's an open agenda um get it on you know maybe we go talk with hop on like a a multis call which i think they were talking on the plumbers working group but that one might not be as good but community getting feedback from other folks would be good so whether it's written up and a pull request happens, that would be fine. And then say, hey, we want feedback on this. I mean, I'm almost up for tagging people in the GitHub if a pull request is there. So just start tagging people in other groups. Yeah, that, that's a really good idea. To prove uh, this this idea and see, yeah, and I mean it. The way it's written is a little bit more general to where it might be helpful for the SIG multi network or what they're doing and how they're wanting to apply it. Probably would have been good to show them that at the uh, KubeCon meeting, but. If we could get it on a future one, that would be good. Yeah, also if I did some assumptions or like if something is missing there, uh, feel free to add it. Like uh, probably not very good documentary and things.
I'm up for working with you to try to um, get something ready and maybe pull in some other info. Um, Silva, you know, if we can get on and talk with them and say, here's an area where we're trying to do, I, I seems like they're trying to move forward on implementation and it would relate to RA2, RC2 stuff with Annika. So maybe reaching out to Silva and are you involved on the Annika side? Um, currently, do you think this would be good? Uh, I barely involved in, in Annika. Uh, I mean, yeah, it just, I, I didn't attend all the meetings, just, but yeah, I kind of started attending again and see if you can propose that. All right. Um, I'd like to see if we can talk with the Silva folks. And then the other part would be testing. Like what? Think. I mean, thinking forward, of course, if, if something moves forward in SIG multi-network, then there's going to end up being E to E test around that. Um, eventually that'll go into Kubernetes conformance, but it, the, so once it's in Kubernetes, then there's going to be different things that could be tested, like in the CNF test suite and everything. Um, if you have a CNF coming up and it's using multiple interfaces, is it using this new multi-network um, thing that whatever comes out of that, but that's for our future. So is there anything that we can do now that would be beneficial as a tool in the community to say, are you doing declarative network configuration or not? And um, yeah, this, this has an um, interesting topic. <laughs> uh, the thing is like, Mm -hmm. uh, NSM, uh, they in NSM in the first release they did a complete refactoring of source code. So basically, the the way to define things and to use all the APIs, they um, modify completely everything. So the the source code that I used to have for NSM is not working with their latest release that they have. So I don't know why they decide to do that. Probably they had their own think of reasons to do that, but yeah, I need to check with, uh, I don't know if Brad can help me to to to, to fixing those things because I, I I couldn't make to work for, for the current release that in a sense, I tried to, so basically what I'm trying to say, I tried to update uh, the source code that I have for making sure that it's still um, valid, but it, it, have some issues with NSM. Uh, Danon seems to be uh, deprecated. No one is updating the source code. Uh, anyway, I I tested and I'm still working, which is still good news. Multus is still working as expected. So so yeah, it's uh, my only concern is uh, with NSM because uh, NSM proposed a new different approach compared with Multus and Danon, uh, you know, Multus you have to predefine the networks and you have to say, well, I have all these different networks and my pods are going to attach to those networks during the um, per request. Uh, in NSM, the approach is different, like you don't define anything. So the only thing that you find is your uh, deployment. And NSM is going to start connecting or creating the networks during the execution or the creation time. So it's more like an on-demand uh, solution. So 
this this source code seems to be working before like um and I have the end to end testing and checking all these things and try to split in different pieces. For example, it's just, it's just focusing the infrastructure, installing uh, the things necessary for, for the infrastructure. Um, so I, and I have different things like, for example, this component can be replaced with Kiberno. Kiberno offers a similar solution I haven't tested. But yeah, the the mayor concern is this one, uh, which was uh, a huge problem because they, in any sense, they decided to change. Uh, and, and they don't have clear documentation. How how can you use your their, their SDK to, to consume those services? So this, this used to be the initial approach, which was perfectly fine for my proposal. And uh, now it's, I don't know. So yeah, obviously it should be nice if, if uh, Fred can take uh, some eyes on this and help me. Yeah, um, we're putting forward the idea of, of a best practice um, before there's a community consensus on how to do things. Um, I, I think something like this would would be instead of saying um here is how to do it it would it would be in an area that says here's an example of what could be done and then mm -hmm. it would be okay um it's since things are going to continue changing in network service mesh and other you know whatever comes out of um, sig multi-network then our best practice needs to make sure that any implementation specific stuff is it's apparent that it's not uh, the standard but instead just an example of what could be done okay that's right yeah as far as test testing goes I guess it can be a what we had referred to as carrot. I guess it's a carrot test, or it's a test that indicates that you could be doing something cloud native, but we don't know if you're not. Like you may be doing something we're not aware of. So if we looked and said, hey, we're looking for this type of annotation, this network service mesh annotation and they have it, then we can go, oh, this is good. They're doing something positive. So we wanna let um, end users of this CNF know that they're doing something positive. But if we don't find it, it doesn't mean that they're not doing something we didn't recognize since there's not a single standard yet. But if, if there is something that we can show, here's what's currently happening, a valid, like you think it's a valid use of network service mesh that's still applicable, like whatever they're currently doing. And we can write up, here's an annotation test and we check for it. That seems like a valid thing. And if there's anything that we can say, here's a valid example in Multis and Danim of doing annotations, that's like a, if a community standard, if you see anybody doing something, then I think that could be a valid test. So then we're looking at ideally multiple ways that people can do annotations. Until there's a, you know, a single way, then we need to try to cover and look for others. Probably right now, as far as the CNF test suite, it would be 
a bonus type of test where we're going, if you see this, then it's indicating positive um, cloud native behavior by this CNS. It's not, we're not saying, yes, they're absolutely cloud native in the way they do this, sensors not, but it's an indicator, which is okay. I mean, communicating to someone that it appears they're doing something good is fine. And that same sort of example that could be looked at for testing could go into the actual best practice right up. So we're keeping the best practice general and we're giving examples. And then, it, you know, if multi, SIG multi-network makes progress and they came out with like an alpha release, we could just include that. And we do an update to the same best practice. Anyways, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah, no, that definitely makes sense. Um, so it's better to propose something and eventually redefine or publish all these things uh, based on the feedback from the community instead of like not mentioning anything. All right. Uh, that's, is, that's, yeah, that's, we're about time, aren't we? Really? Okay. Okay. Well, that was the, I guess the only topic uh, still, still, still there. Um, so, yeah, that's 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 it. Um, do we still have the next? Yeah. I don't I don't know if we have to start preparing for the holidays and ask if they if we want to have the meetings or just um cancel let's for see if I well real quick before we move on to that, looking at your screen right there for the open issues. I would the link between non-root best practice and not run root and test suite. That one's pretty straightforward. Uh, Tom, I want to get that one knocked out. I'm just kind of looking at the titles real quick. Um, so that one seems okay. We have we just need to update it in the docs. That seems pretty straightforward to try to clear some of these out and have momentum. Um, I want to add that to my to-do list. Would you assign me on that? Okay. Um, yeah, maybe Lucina too. Let's get multiple people on this. This one is straightforward enough that let's get it completed. All right. Um, go ahead and go back to the list of issues. Um, the the 228 skip, that one's harder organization. As multi-network, we did that. The do not run containers with privileges. So that's another best practice. And we have all the content in the least privileges Google Doc. And there's also a test or, test or multiple versions um, of test in the inside of the um, test suite. I th it, there's one in the certification enabled, but the test suite actually has multiple types. So I think that one should be one that we put together sooner than later since we already have content. And having more best practices, I think will motivate people to get involved and it's good to document. Um, one thing that I'm remembering, Lucina, so I'm just trying to think of like, what are some things that we can put in place and um, move forward on? Um, Lucina had mentioned previously to, that we could start using that best CNF dev document. We had hold, held off because we didn't have 
any best enough best maybe no best practices when Robbie created it. But I think we could start linking them in there, like the non root. Um, that would be one. Yeah. And like, how do people find these? Well, you can go in GitHub and look at that CBB, CBPP folder. But I think it'd be better to just send people here. Mm -hmm. Now this may need, you know, some updates or maybe we just start putting them in. I just realized scroll up um, the, under configuration lifecycle. Uh -huh. Best CNF cool. applications configured via standard way. I guess those are just examples. Um, what is number two? Application announces on membership of the tier to its peers. Interesting. Those are not, those are going to be fake. I think so they just got put in there. I was trying to see if they're actual best practices that we should write out. Yeah, that doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, those are just examples. But adding the ones that we have in here might be a good thing. Um, I don't know if we wanna update the categories before doing that or just put them in. Because when we're trying, to, we want to be able to get more people engaged, and you know, in 2023, get this going again. We had a higher number of folks that were involved for a while, and it's kind of fallen off. Um, but we're towards the end of year, so thinking like 2023 and getting people engaged and contributing. If we say, here's what we're trying to do, we're trying to help the de developers and the and the end users of those developers with having CNFs that are following best practices that everybody understands. So here it is, the best practices for CNF developers. We're contributing right here. And starting with this document, when we're talking to people, is probably better than go to the GitHub page and clicking and going, what is... BBPPP stand for, you know, just, just start here, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's kind of confused. Uh, the, the other content, or maybe one of the topics that we can add it here in the disease could be sustainability, maybe. Uh, some practices, best practice for sustainability or environment uh, care, I don't know. What do you think? I, I didn't catch the last part. Can you say that again? No, yeah, I was thinking like maybe you, uh, providing like uh, 11, then the number 11, like sustainability, like sustainability or things that impact oh, the gotcha. environment. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Um, yeah, uh, sustainability. Um, I don't know if it's just environmental sustainability might be the category. If there's any other sustainability. Yeah, I don't know if we have some best practices in that term, but at least it's like raising the topic there and could be something uh, interesting to explore. I like it. Environmental sustainability or just sustainability. Um, I don't know if, there, if there's any other sustainability that a CNF would care about, but um, yeah, what Lucina just put in there. Can we add this comments to the, if it hadn't already happened to the, the meeting notes, please? This is a good idea. I, I really like that. Thanks, Lucina. <laughs> Thanks. You're awesome. All right. Um, yes for that, adding that category. And then what do you think as far as adding best practices into the best CNF dev doc? No, that's also a good idea as well. 
Yeah, and that way we can give it more visibility and clarify right. fittings. Since we're running out of time before break, um, let's see. Um, let, let's just mark that, then I'll come back to what I was going to say. December 26, let's just cancel that one. I'm a no on that. Let's. Are you gonna? Do you want to run one on on the 26, Victor? <laughs> no. All right. Let's cancel. Um. And this one as well, right? Uh, or... Cancel on the second. Sounds good. The. What is the 19th? Nothing. 19. That's not, that seems all right. Let's keep the 19th. All right. Okay. Yeah, looks good. All right. So are you um, available this week for maybe some working sessions to get through some of this? Yes, yes, I, I, I have some time. No so worries. one that I don't want to do, but I think should be done if we're going to do this, add practices to that document, is update the categories um, from 10 to 7, ticket 228. <laughs> That's something that's a little tedious and annoying, but if we get the categories updated or decide if we're going to update them and then do it, yes or no, um, we'll make it better if we're adding tickets, adding new best practices, sorry. So ticket 228, which is going to, if we match this best practices for CNF developers, set of categories and looking at matching them to the CNF test suite or a set of categories. I think it'll be easier to find stuff. So I'm gonna show like I think that like the rationale document has content like that's base content for best practices that we could potentially write up any Is that, you want that I, I stop sharing or like what's that are you going to share something um sure I can share So th this is just this rationale, which is just a short, these are just short write-up of different things, you know, microservices, reasonable startup time. If they're not responding to readiness checks, and this is after download, so this, this test waits for the CNF, the image to be available and actually initiate container startup on the host machine. So if, if it's not having any response at all, then in, it's indicative of a monolithic application. So that's the idea. And having something around a best practice, you know, if, if it takes 20 minutes for an application to actually respond to availability, when something's going on. Mm -hmm. Even if it's saying, I don't want to accept new services, uh, don't don't have the proxy or whatever put me in service yet because it's waiting on multiple other things to come up. There should be some type of responsiveness and say, I'm waiting. You know, if I'm, I'm thinking like restful applications, you can still respond and then have applications that are intelligent because of the response. 
that's not the best choice, but it'd be better than nothing, like no response. Um, anyways, the point is, uh, if we go to categories that match, then I, th I think it's going to be a little bit easier. But we need to look and see if it makes sense for what we've been writing over there. So compatibility and solvability, upgradability, that one, um, let me bring this up. And then this up. Not found. Oh. Not found. Doc. All right. So installation, upgrade, configuration, lifecycle, those were merged. Installability and lifecycle management. I'm saying there's no space here. No minor thing. All right. Um, so this is merging two categories, which there was overlap and which one does it go in? Is it gonna go in to configuration or is it gonna go into um, configuration life cycle or is this part of the initial installation? Well, upgrades and installation, I mean, there's configuration items that you could say, well, it's important to do this so that you can do deployments. But then you go, well, isn't that part of the life cycle? So that whole uh, discussion around where it should go, it seemed like it was better to have something like this. So that was the decision there. Uh, microservices, I think still, the split, I need to move these each other. So we still have microservices. Hardware compatibility, I think um, hardware support got merged in, I believe. But I'm gonna go over to the test categories. Anyways, that's the idea. We don't have to do it now, but I, I think we should look at this and then decide are we going to um, keep them separate where they're not in sync or do we merge them? Okay, got it. Just realized so, we have this configuration test here and we have compatibility. I guess it is split. All right. So we need to look that over in my mind. And then that kind of influences how we think about best practices and when we're communicating, when we're in the middle of it, you know, Victor, you may go, I know this is applicable in multiple areas, but when we're trying to get other people engaged and they go, I don't, I don't know what that is. All I do is help over here. And I go, yeah, it's applicable. But more, ca less categories is probably easier. So this would be seven right now and eight if we had the sustainability rather than 11 total. And don't you think that it's going to be a little bit more confusing to have less or everything all in a single one? Or, or... Um, it's been less confusing when people are saying a best practice is applicable in two different categories and those categories mm -hmm. are similar enough. So then you just go, here's the set. They're all applicable. I mean, in the context of a specific best practice, it may say this is for more applicable for the install on day one. And another may be, well, upgrades are applicable related to the day one, but they're also part of lifecycle management. Those are, all, they're kind of all related tests. They're close enough in relation and depending on how you how your workflow is and the oper you know operations workflow and everything you may split those out or you, and have like a 
the initial dev and install team or or not but it's all related whenever they come in Let, let's take a look or if you want to look ahead of time but i'll reach out to you maybe with some time and we can look at that and then look at adding best practices and then some working sessions to maybe work on the new best practices like the network stuff and how we could present to that to different groups. Sure, sure. That sounds good. Right. Thanks, Victor. Thanks, Lucina. Have a good day. Thank you, you too. Bye-bye.